Hi class, in this lecture here, what we want to do is we want to now study, uh, start our study of survey problems. Now, I really, really think these problems are fun. Um, I really enjoy doing them. Um, and they're, they're kind of like little puzzles to solve. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to be given some type of survey. And what we want to do is we want to break down the survey into, into like granular numbers for each individual response of the survey. And so what we're going to do here is you're going to see is we're going to use Venn diagrams for this. And um, I'm going to break this lecture up into um, two videos. So the first lecture are going to be with uh, two sets. So there's, you know, there's two responses to the survey or, or two options, two optional responses to the survey. And then lecture number three, or excuse me, lecture number two, sorry about that, uh, will be if there's with three sets. All right, and this will make sense once we, once you see the, the, the first, um, first example here. Okay, so what I wanna start with first is I wanna give you a completed survey that has, um, the results listed from the survey in a Venn diagram for two sets. And then what we're gonna do, you'll see later on, is we're going to take uh, survey information and input it into a Venn diagram. Okay, so let, let's, let's start with this one here, okay? So this is visualizing the results of a survey. So the results of a survey are summarized in this figure. So we have this Venn diagram here. So the Venn diagram shows the results of survey. And so basically here, here's, here's the problem. So, you know, the school is putting on this blood drive and it asked students, it said, you know, um, uh, we, need, we need students to donate blood and we also need people to help us serve breakfast to the donors, okay? So set A here is people who are willing to, to give blood, so donate blood, so that's what set A is. And what set B is, is it's the, the set of students willing to serve breakfast. So they're saying, yeah, yeah, I'll stick around and serve breakfast. All right, and what you notice is, is there's a little bit of an overlap here. Okay, so the overlap here, where the two sets intersect, that, that students who are, who are saying, you know, you know what, I am willing to do both. I'm willing to donate blood and I'm willing to serve breakfast. This region one here, so that's region two is the intersect, they're willing to do both. Okay, so think about set two here is uh, the intersection of the two, okay? Set A here, or region one here of set A, these, these, these students here are just the students who are like, you know what, no, 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 I, I, I'm only gonna donate blood, all right? I don't wanna also serve breakfast, okay? And then region three here over here, the, the, this region here is the, this number of students are students who say, you know what, I just wanna serve breakfast, but I don't wanna donate blood. And this region in the middle here, as I said, here's the people who are willing to do both, okay? This number outside, okay? This is the, the number of students who don't wanna do either of those activities, okay? So let me just start by saying, you know, how many, even before I get to these questions here, how many uh, total students were in the survey? Okay, so, so to answer that question, what you have to do is you have to sum up all the numbers. So there were 370 students here, 120 here, 220 here, and 290 outside. So let's grab our calculator here. So it looked like this survey had 1,000 total students. Okay, a lot of, a lot of students were, were, were in this survey here. So the next thing we have to do is uh, let, let's let's answer the rest of the questions. So how many students are willing to donate blood? So donate blood is all the students in set A. So it, it includes this 120 people who are willing to do both. So uh, look at all the students in set A, all the students in set A. So this is 370 
plus the 120, because this, this 120 is going to donate blood and do both, okay? So when you add these together, it looks like there were 490 total students who are willing to donate blood. So how many are willing to donate blood but not serve breakfast? That's just this 370 here, because this overlap here are, are, you know, I'm willing to serve breakfast too. So it's just this 370 here. And now how many people weren't willing to do either? Well, that would be the outside. 290 students said, no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to get blood or I don't want to serve breakfast. You know, I want to sleep in or something. Okay. So th those are the, the people on the outside that don't want to do either. So this is kind of how you just look at a Venn diagram and, and discern, you know, answer questions, discern information from it. So what, what we want to do now going forward is, is I want to give you the results of a survey and then I want to put it into a Venn diagram and then I want to answer some questions related to it. Okay, so here's how here's how you're going to do this. All right, solving survey problems. So you're going to use the survey's description to define sets and draw a Venn diagram. So I'm always going to give you the Venn diagram set up. All right, you're just going to have to then define the sets and you'll see that in the coming examples. All right, you're going to use the survey's results to determine the cardinality of each region. So what the cardinality is, is the number in each region. All right, so think about it, the number total in each region. Okay, so going back, like this was region one, this was region two, this was region three, and outside was region four. All right, then what you're gonna have to do um, is you're gonna have to put numbers into the region. So what you're always gonna do, this is super important, you're always gonna start with the intersection of the set. So the innermost region and work outwards. So for these problems, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start in, in, in the innermost region here, region two, and then work outwards. All right, and then once you do that, you're gonna use the completed Venn diagram to answer the, the problems questions. All right, so I have, a, I have a number of examples here that we'll, we'll work through here. And I, you know, I, I, they're going to be fun. I, 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 I enjoy doing these problems. I hope, you know, as you watch these and you try them on your own, you know, um, you know, you find them fun as well. Okay, so right off the bat, a survey asked 200 people, what beverage do you drink in the morning? All right, and these are the choices. So they say tea only, coffee only, or both. Okay, so tea only, coffee only, or both. All right. And then uh, let me rephrase that. These are the beverages, but but also note they can say none. They can say neither. Okay, just to add that. All right. So here's the problem. I want to construct a Venn diagram for this problem. So 20 people said I drink tea only. 80 people report coffee only. And 40 people. Um, said, you know what, I, 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 I drink I drink both, okay? So myself, I'm a big coffee drinker in the morning, so I would have been in the coffee only people. All right, so notice I've got, there's, there's two things here that people say. They say tea or coffee, okay? So I'm gonna have this yellow set here be the tea, people who drink tea. I'm gonna have this, this blue one here, okay, be the people who drink coffee. All right, so now to complete the Venn diagram, I have to find people in region one, region two, region three, and then also the people who said neither. Start with the innermost section. All right, so 40 people reported both. So this overlap region is people who drink coffee and tea. So that's the 40 there. Next, so we got this. So move to the next, 80 people. 80 people report only coffee. So that, that, that means only coffee. So that means no intersection with tea. So the, o the only coffee, coffee only, is that 80 right there. Now that's only coffee. All right, that doesn't include the overlap. And then 20 report tea only, tea only. So that, that, that would be the people here, okay? Next, you need to figure out how many people... Um, said, you know, neither, I don't, I don't drink coffee or tea. So to find the outside region, region four, 
How many total people were there? There were 200 total people in the survey. And you're going to subtract away what's accounted for. Well, how many people did you account for? Uh, 20 and 40 is 60, and 80 is 140. So notice how there's 60 people not accounted for. Those 60 people are on the outside here. 60 people said, no, nah, I don't drink anything. You know, people are like, oh, I just drink water or soda. It's it's neither coffee nor tea. I, I don't know how people can do it without caffeine, but, you know, that, that those are the people on the outside there. All right, now, now let's, let's, Let's jump in and, and ask some questions. Of those surveyed, how many people drink tea in the morning? So you have to be careful. This 40 people here, okay, who drink coffee and tea, who reported both, they still drink, they still drink tea. So you gotta look at the total circle of tea people, okay? That would be the 20 people and these 40 people here. Okay, so that would be 60 total people drink tea. 60 total drink tea. Uh, sorry, 20 plus 40 is a little bit of a typo there. All right. Kind of expanding on this, just so you can see how many people drink coffee in the morning. Well, let's look here. Look at the coffee circle. It includes the overlap. Okay, the coffee includes the overlap. So it'd be 40 plus 80. What does that get you? Looks like 120 people said they drink coffee, like myself. Like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking a cup of coffee while we go through this. And now how many people drink neither tea or coffee? Well, that's the outside. That's the 60 right here. Doo -doo, the 60 people. So you have to pay real close attention. This is really important. You have to pay real close attention to the wording of the problem because there's a, you're going to see in the next example I do it's 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 slightly different. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit little bit harder. So again, listen, pay attention to the to the wording. Okay. Okay. So here's another problem. So we're going to do one about courses and then we'll do another one about news. So you can see the slightly different wording. So a survey of 120 college students was taken at registration. Okay, so just so just to be clear, this is the total. Of those surveys, 75% 75 students registered for a math course, 65 for an English course, and 40 for both a math and English. Okay. So we we have two sets here. We have the people who registered for math and the people who registered for English. So I'll have the yellow be the math, the set of people who studied math, and this blue one here be the people who studied English. All right, so I have to take these numbers and whoosh, put them into the Venn diagram. So again, start with the innermost. So this, is, this intersection here is the people who studied math and English. Boom, so that goes there. Now this is where it gets tricky. I said 65 studied for an English course or registered for an English course. So what that means, notice the subtle difference. Here it's saying like coffee only, coffee only. But here it's just saying, ah, 65 for an English. So how many people are in the blue, are in the English set already? It would be 45. So then the people that would go here, you have to make sure the numbers sum up to, to 65 so you would back out the 40, and that would go right here. Because then look, in the, in the circle, it would be 40 plus 25 gets me that 65. So notice the subtle difference here. Next, 75 students registered for a math course. Well, look, here's the circle of math. 40 people are already accounted for. So it looks like this region here is only 35 people. 
All right, so now you need to figure out how many people are on the outside. Well, look, there was 120 total. Well, how many people are accounted for? So we're gonna subtract 35, the 40, and the 25. Let's grab our calculator. It looks like 20 people didn't register for either. Ah, okay. So notice the subtle difference. Like this one here, I said, I gave you the total for English. I didn't just say English only. So that would have included, boom, those 40 people. That's why you have to back it out, all right? You'll notice too, like one way to check your answer, by the way, is, you know, the numbers have to sum up to 120, right? So like 35 and 25 is 60, 100, all right, 120. So, so I did it right because these numbers sum to 120. So always like check your work too, right? Like, you know, make sure, you know, go back and go through and, and, and you know, take your time and check your, check your work. All right, so now let's answer some questions here. Okay. How many registered only, only, only for a math course? Well, this is the only math, right? Because this 40 includes English too. So only math would be the 35 students here. How many registered only, only for an English course? Well, that would be this 25, 25 right here. This is, this is cool. How many registered for a math course or an English course? Okay, so that would be sets A union B here, okay? Because I want to or, or. Well, look, math or English would be all of these students. They studied, for, they registered for a math or an English, math or an English, math or an English. It would be all the, the numbers together. So 35 plus 40 plus 25. which gets you that 100 students. And how many did not register for either a math course, a little bit of a typo, or an English course? Well, that would be the 20 outside. That would be the people who didn't either. All right, so what I, I know these, these do seem a little confusing, um, you know, maybe like the first time you see them, but what, what I encourage you to do, okay, is I have this next example here. This will be the last example I have. What I, what I really encourage you to do is just to, you know, pause, pause the video, try to set up the Venn diagram and answer the next couple questions, all right? I, I really encourage you, you know, as you're watching the lecture to make sure you understand, um, you know, make sure you understand everything, just pause, Give it a shot. So I'm going to pause for five seconds. You know, hopefully you're doing that. And then I'm, you know, have the video pause. And then I'm going to come back and uh, solve it. Okay. All right. So hopefully you paused. Okay. And gave it a shot. Um, so let, now let me show you this one. Okay. So a survey of 75 college students was taken to determine. Okay. So this... This is the total. Whether they got their news, where they, excuse me, determine where they got their news about what's going on in the world. Of those surveys, 20 students got their news, uh, got the news, a little bit of a typo, uh, from newspapers, 43 from TV, and seven from both newspapers and TV. So we have two sets going on here. People who got their news from newspapers. All right. And then we got people who got their news from TV. A little bit of an old problem here. It'd probably be the internet or TV now. No one really reads newspapers much anymore. Okay, but again, boom, boom, boom. Start in the middle. So seven people got it from both. So that's both. All right. 43 got it from TV. 
Well, here's the TV circle. Seven of those people are already accounted for. So 43 minus 7, 36 go in this region right here. So we did the 7, we did the 43, and now let's do the 20. So newspapers here, the 20 students here. All right, got it, get it from newspaper. But seven of those students are already accounted for. So 20 minus 7 gets me 13. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out how many people, how many were on the outside here, okay? So again, there's 75 in the survey. So we're gonna take 75 and we're gonna subtract all the numbers. So 75 minus 13, minus seven, minus 36. So it looks like 19 students got it from another source. Maybe the internet, right? So 19 goes on the outside. And again, you, you know, if you were to add these numbers up, you would get back to 75. So so we know we did it we know we did it correctly. All right, let's let's now answer some questions from this. Of those surveys, how many got the news from only, only newspapers? Well, only newspapers would be these 13 because this seven also got it from TV. So it would be only these 13 here, just this region here. How many got the news from only, only, only TV? Well, that would be this 36 right here, because that seven got it from both. So just this 36 here. How many got the news from newspapers or, or TV? Well, so that would be all of these people here. So it would be 13 plus seven plus 36. Thirteen and seven is twenty. Twenty plus thirty-six would be fifty-six students. And then, in how many? How many did not get the news from either newspaper or TV? Well, that would just be the students outside the uh, outside the two sets. That would be the nineteen. They got their news from from other sources. Okay, class. So what we're going to do in the in the next lecture here, the follow-up lecture to this, okay, it's going to be a little bit harder, okay? I'm just going to give you a preview. What we're going to do is we're going to expand on this to three sets. And you can see, whew, there's a there's a, a lot going on here, but you know, I'm going to show you how to work through it in the in the coming um, uh, coming coming prob coming lecture. And and these problems are even more fun. So, all right, class, well, We'll pause this lecture now and we'll come back and do uh, survey problems with three sets. Mm -hmm.